Just before we start, I would like to clarify a little bit in a short statement why I am recording this reaction to Israel and not ignoring it like some of the other YouTube channels do. In my opinion, Eurovision is a song contest at the first place. Politics is something what you know has some impact in the end on the results, but it's not a political competition. But let's just focus on music and not on the politics. We are, of course, all aware of the controversy behind the decisions of European Broadcasting Union with regards to Russia, Israel, Ukraine. We all know which country the main sponsor of Eurovision Song Contest is coming from. So I think this is not really up on us to decide what is the best. I'm sure that people in the European Broadcasting Union are aware of all the events happening in the world, and I'm sure that by taking this decision, they definitely had their reasons for and against the participation of Israel. And after all, Israel is there. So for me, it's time to react to the song which has been sent by Israel to the competition. And this year, Israel has picked a very, very talented Russian-Israeli singer, Adam Golan, who actually has spent most of her life in Russia. She even took part in The Voice Kids in Russia, where she performed with Sergei Lazarev. Keep us strong, exactly who we are. It's just And she won the right to represent her new home Eurovision Song Contest by winning a sort of idols fame factory show in Israel, where she was actually the first participant ever, the first and the last till today, who has received like the maximum score based on the jury and the televote with her cover of the song Rise. So she's a fantastic performer. She actually, when she was still living in Russia, even tried to go to the Junior Eurovision to represent Russia there. So I'm very happy for Eden that she won her rights to go to Eurovision. I just hope this experience will be a really positive one for her, that she will not face any dangerous situation from some crazy people. So, yeah. And now let's take a look at the lyrics of the song. So you probably all have heard that the initial title of the song was October Rain. Uh, the text was considered to be too political by the European Broadcasting Union, probably referring to some well-known events of October last year. And therefore, they had to remove those words, but the general lyric of the song stayed the same. So if we read through the lyrics, it is, you know, kind of not really making too much sense, not really telling a clear story, but you can get the meaning that she is singing about some bad event where she's saying someone stole the moon tonight, took my light, everything is black and white. So who is the fool who told you boys don't cry? So she's kind of saying something has happened, you know, on one day particularly, and then everything became, you know, suddenly bad. And she just prays for people to stop suffering. The war is nothing good. And what we are facing right now should never happen. But now let's just take a look at the music video. Let's listen to the song. I haven't heard it so far, so I'm very curious, but I have heard that it should be quite an emotional ballad. So let's see, it's Eden and Hurricane. My symphony, play with me, look into my eyes and see People walk away but never say goodbye well, it starts quite beautifully. I really like the structure of the melody. It's nothing, you know, groundbreaking, nothing what we have never heard in the past, but I'm a sucker for ballads and this starts like quite a beautiful ballad. Hours and hours and powers Life is no game but it's ours 
yeah, quite uh, tragic, but you know, there is a light of hope and you can feel it in her voice. She's actually a very stunning looking and I'm pretty sure she's an amazing vocalist based on those other performances, which I have shown to you. So she will definitely slay the song on stage. The time goes wild. Yeah, this was a beautiful belting in this wild. I like that. I'm quite mesmerized by her vocal, I have to say. Dancing in the storm, I got nothing to hide. Take it out and leave the world behind. There is so much power in her voice, it's incredible. Well, that this ballad is having a bit of a slow build up at this point of time, I have to say, like in the chorus, they could have already included more instrumental, but her voice is so powerful that she's just, you know, giving us more and more power with her voice, which at this point of time is sufficient. I just hope that with the second verse, then some instrumental will come because otherwise it feels a little bit too much like an acoustic version of the song. Right, baby. I have to say, I found the dancing a little bit disturbing, like they were kind of creating this really powerful atmosphere artificially. I wish that it would be rather created by the backing track. It's not really a kind of dancing or movement, what you would like to do when you listen to the song. So there I felt a bit of a mismatch, but maybe it has some meaning, which I just didn't grasp. Okay. those sounds with like uh, raindrops it uh, maybe it just stayed there because initially the song was titled october rain then you know rain then the raindrop um, sounds so kind of makes more sense but now it reminds me even a little bit of slovenian entry which is also playing with this water sounds like drowning sounds and so on so water seems to be a theme of this year which i'm glad about because water is also a theme of my channel so if you haven't subscribed yet please don't forget to subscribe Living in a fantasy, ecstasy, everything is meant to be. Oh, this I really like. I really love that now the beat comes, now it becomes even, you know, kind of more up tempo, a bit dancey, which is great. It reminds me, I have to say, of like <laughs> lots of different ballads from the previous years, but especially I would say with this now transition to like more up tempo, I think Monica Maria with the song Light On for finished second in Lithuanian selection a couple of years ago. Ready to leave. It is just a very clever transition. I think pure ballads is something what televoters don't appreciate so much in Eurovision. And if you add this kind of beat to it, then, you know, it's becoming much more accessible. This visual is just incredible. You know, the song is titled Hurricane. Now we see this kind of hurricane roaming around those people, taking them so that they also start flying. No idea how they did it, but it looks very beautiful. Okay, in our company of singing operatic divas of Natalia Barbu from Moldova, Raven from Slovenia. We can now add Eden Golan from Israel. So this is very beautiful. Yeah, I'm glad that she's not also in the first semifinal where the other two ones are, because this will help her to stand out. I have to say, even these notes there also reminded me again a little bit of that light on by Monica Maria, who was doing, of course, not in such extent, but also something similar towards the end of her song. Just 
but what Eden is doing actually now with her hands, like this kind of stretching, it even looks a little bit scary <laughs> to me. Not sure what's the meaning behind, like she's kind of broken from this hurricane and her body is sort of broken. Maybe that's the idea behind, but I hope they will not do this on stage. <laughs> Well, yeah, this is definitely a very emotional entry. What a powerful ballad we got from Israel this year. But now let's take a look in which semifinal they will compete and who are their neighbors in the running order. So Israel has been drawn place 14 in the second semifinal and they will perform after Estonia and Italy. So actually after two very much, you know, like optimistic up-tempo entries and before Norway and the Netherlands. I think that Israel and Norway <laughs> next to each other is somehow strange because they are both, you know, a little bit heavy, dramatic songs and putting them next to each other in the lineup just makes the mood to go kind of very much down. But then the Netherlands, you know, will just change it, obviously. And in the end, the mood is still good. But I would still split these two songs a bit more. I think we have enough nice up-tempo entries in the second semi-final in order to not have these two next to each other. But this is still a great running order for Israel. They are performing towards the end of the semi-final. So I think they have a very good shot for qualifying. But let's just take a look at the qualification history of Israel and how they were rated by the televoters in the last 5 and 15 years. So as you can see on your screen, Israel is ranked actually only 18th in the last 15 years, which puts them on place 7. So they were basically not qualifying for for five years in a row in accordance with the televoting results between 2010 and 2014. Actually, through those years, they managed to qualify with the help of the juries. For example, 2010, it's quite an iconic entry from Harel Scott Milim. <laughs> So Israel was rather helped a lot by the juries. And in the last five years, Israel definitely turned it all around. And now they're on place five, which puts them in the ranking on place two in the second semifinal, only after Norway, which is a great result for them. They actually managed to finish even third in the semifinal last year with Unicorn. Feminine, feminine, feminine. And I have to say, I'm kind of surprised by the results of Israel in the semifinal of 2018, where actually Israel won the whole competition because they won the telephone in the Eurovision final. This is what brought victory to them. But in the semifinal, they were not even in top three. And it was, of course, Neta Barzilai with Toy. One of the composers of Hurricane this year by Eden Golan is actually Staff Beger, who is behind two almost most successful entries of Israel in the contest. So he wrote 2015's entry, Golden Boy. And 2018's Toy, which I have already mentioned before, which didn't win the semifinal but won the televoting in the final, quite surprisingly. So she definitely has quite a powerful team of composers behind. But we see that these three best finishes of Israel in the semifinals were actually with quite, you know, like up tempo songs with some oriental vibe. And some ballads actually were rather ranked much higher by the jurors than by the televoters. So I wouldn't say that the qualification of Israel this year is solidified. I think that the televoters generally don't like ballads so much. And now let's take a look at what the bookmakers think. And in this semifinal, they put Israel on place seven, which puts them below Norway, Armenia, Belgium, Greece, Switzerland, and the Netherlands, but above Austria, Estonia, Georgia, Denmark, and the other five countries. So it's actually not that high, especially taking into account that in the odds to win the whole competition, Israel is ranked ninth. So basically bookmakers are still kind of unsure how it will go 
in the semi-final, but if it is in the final, they still expect it to see pretty high. Well, I have to say this year is, of course, quite different for Israel. This year, they're also very much dependent on like the whole image of the country. And I think many people who would normally vote for this kind of ballot, who would really enjoy it and like it very much, they will just see from which country it comes and they will not vote for this. But on the other hand, some people might be even more passionate to vote for Israel this year. So it all really depends. It's a bit hard to predict which way it will go. And in the Eurovision scoreboard app, Israel is ranked 17th in the ranking who will win Eurovision and is ranked 10th in the ranking of this particular semi-final. So it is, of course, not a very high position, but I think in the Eurovision fan community, a lot of people are also very much affected by the current political events and are not really only ranking the songs, but also kind of disqualifying Israel for known reasons. So it is really hard to say which way it will go. But I think at this point of time, it's quite clear that Israel is probably not in top five this year. And what about the staging concepts? Well, Israel is known for staging their songs well. And I think especially this year where they get so much media attention, they will definitely try to bring up an amazing performance so that in case they don't qualify, that you know that they say well it's only because of the politics or something like that so i think they will really bring something very emotional very personal i'm pretty sure they will also use some dancers like in a similar way what they had in their music video it was quite effective i just hope that they don't overdo it because i'm pretty sure that the vocals of eden will be just absolutely stunning and mesmerizing and this is what should be in the main focus of the song i have actually not mentioned one more comparison which i was now thinking about doesn't it remind you a little bit of entry of maria sur never give up from last year's Melody Festival. I will never, never give up. All Israeli ballads in the past, 2013, 2010, as you have seen, those powerful songs were actually not qualifying from the semifinals. So they really have to bring up a very powerful performance with dancers on stage, with her in the spotlight. I think they should not really take the performance of Maria Sur for Melody Festival as an example, because I think that one was a little bit too static, a bit too boring. So I think they should go for some different concept and then we will see how well they will do. Did you like the Son of Israel this year? I hope you will share your opinion about the Son in the comments and not about the political situation. So really looking forward to hear from you and see you in the next video. Bye bye.